This is a video I came across in my archives of when I did a pixie faux hawk cut. Thought I would share it with you because sometimes starting out as a new hairstylist, or even if you're a colorist, cutting short hair can be intimidating. First thing to remember is to always map out the haircut. As I demonstrated here, I have parted off at the parietal ridge all the way around the head, right below the occipital bone. In this haircut, I intend to make the sides extremely tight. So by taking diagonal back sections, working with the round of the head, just pulling the hair straight out from the head and cutting. Just cutting it as tight as I can between my fingers. Using the fine teeth of the comb, scooping up from underneath, this enables you to be able to lift the hair up into your fingers. Fingers need to be pressed close against the head. As you come around to the ear, just continue the diagonal back sections, but going with the round of the head. Taking fine sections enables you to stay precise. This is precision haircutting. If you notice, I am taking fine sections so that I can see my previous section that I cut. This is your guide. Sometimes it feels like taking really fine sections seems tedious and more time consuming, but trust me, if you can get in the habit of working more detailed with finer sections, you'll have a lot less cleanup at the final, the final result of your haircut. In this instance, I started on the left side of the head and worked my way to the center. And then once you reach the center of the back of the head, then move to the right side of the head using the same diagonal back sections, pressing my fingers against the head using the fine teeth of the comb to lift the hair up and set it into my fingers. Cutting, if you notice, cutting palm to palm. This haircut I did during COVID. So um, this is a really also great for you to pay attention to how I have the client holding the mask because it can be pretty tedious or kind of hard to cut cuts like this when your client is wearing a mask. Here again, just pointing out, I'm just lifting the hair up and pulling it straight out from the head. My fingers are resting on her scalp and setting the hair inside my fingers. I can see my guide and I cut right on the guide, cutting palm to palm. The clips, if you wanted to know what those are, I really like the frame art clips. I like them because the little round knot knobs on the end, the way they're made, they're easy to get, um, to clip in and clip out, but they're super tight. So when you're working on hair such as this, um, having a clip that stays secure in the hair and not slipping out makes a huge difference. I do not recommend using the big jaw clips or the big, um, the big uh, clips. They can be way too bulky when you're working on um, hair such as this. Once you've reached um, the point where you've cut both sides, go back in in the opposite direction that you cut and check your work and clean up those little points that you find. This is where it makes a difference when you work with fine sections, you don't have as much cleanup. Now, because I wanted it to be tighter, going back in with a really fine blending shear and just doing scissor over comb and working through it just to make sure there's no lines in there and just bringing it just a little bit tighter. 
In this instance, this client really wanted it tight in the nape and around the ears. Be aware when you're using this technique with a blending shear, don't open and close the scissors too much. I mean, opening and closing it maybe once or twice as I each each um, section, I'm just kind of working up the head shape here, opening and closing the shears as I move up and down. You don't want to get any holes. It's almost like a dance that you're working with the scissors and uh, the comb. Again, being aware of your head shape, I'm working with the round of the head. This was one of the first videos I did as I watch it. I'm like, okay, I can tell this was one of my first recordings, but I thought it would be good for you to see it up close, to see um, the hair. You can kind of see how it's cutting and the effect that the shears are giving it. Now go back in using your shears and just really cleaning it up around the edges and the perimeter. This is super important when you're doing precision cutting. Here around the ear, you can use the fine um, teeth of your comb. You can see that I switched to a smaller comb and I'm just combing the hair in the direction that I'm um, of the hairline and just securing it with my comb and then just cleaning right up along the hairline with my scissors. It's really important to use a shear with a really fine point on the end. Now here I'm using a razor to clean up the ends. You can see in her hairline she had a lot of calyx and movement. So I'm just kind of using my comb with my razor and cleaning up the hairline and just kind of using my own eye on what I like to see here. And if you have a few extra hairs that you just kind of don't want them there, maybe it's too fringy, just by lifting it up in the comb and then kind of taking the razor in the opposite direction will remove that hair. Here, I'm just pulling it forward against its growth pattern using the very edge of my razor like a, like a, a pencil and just removing that hair will really create that real um, precision around the hairline. And then just detailing. Again, this is your personal eye, your personal creativity, your vision here. I feel like when you're cutting short hair, it's, you know, once you have it mapped out and you're working with in a disciplined manner with your sectioning and um, fine sections, it allows you to become creative because you, you're confident in what you're doing. You're not getting lost in your haircut. Here on the opposite side, it can be kind of hard. So just by pulling the ear forward and then securing that hair with the comb and then going in with your scissor really helps a lot. Now, you know, sectioning off right um, above where the crown area is, down to the tips of the ear, you can start working at the back of the head. I'm gonna start blending that hair um, with the nape. You're doing this with a razor. I like to use a razor because it gives a softer vibe to it, a softer feel. But I'm pulling it out at a 45 degree angle because here is where we're gonna start graduation. Just like with any haircut, you could, there's only three ways to cut hair. It's one length, graduation, and layering. And in this instance, we did layering throughout the nape, and now we're moving into graduation to kind of build up that shape. Now we mapped it out according to the end results of our haircut. We want to do a, a faux hawk type um, vibe to it. So with that being said, this gal wants volume starting right around the parietal ridge and right down 
below the occipital bone. She wants to have that hair pop out all the way down there. So that is why I mapped it out the way I did. If I were doing a regular um, pixie haircut, I would have mapped this out right at or a little bit above the occipital bone, depending on how prominent the occipital bone is. Once you finish the back side, then we're going to move into the front side. Same, building up that, um, that weight, although I am creating some disconnection here in the front because I want some length there. Um, so I am pulling it out probably about an inch below where I had um, cut. This way, um, it gives versatility in the haircut. Um, as you'll be able to see in the end of the, at the end of the video, I blue dry it smooth, and she can get a more contemporary look of this, or when she decides to put uh, product in it and blow dry it um, and have that more fun, faux hockey, trendy um, statement style, she can do that. Again, once we've finished the right side, moving on to the left side. Really doesn't matter which side you start on or finish on. It's whatever is easiest for you. The key points that I want to point out here is just always, you know, checking your balance, um, being aware of where you are in the head shape, making sure that you map it out. And in here, what 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 tools are you using? If you you know, I'm using a razor here, just because I wanna create movement in the hair. Um, with her texture, she needs that help to get it to wanna to, to do something. Um, around the nape and the sides, I used a shear, but with a very pointy um, um, tip so that I can do that detailing work. And we also used a blending shear with really fine teeth to be able to you know, remove the bulk around the nape and to create that softness. Here now we're blending the frontal area where the fringe is gonna be. Here I'm using the same shears I used around the nape and the sides. Uh, point cutting in, don't want blunt lines in here. Pulling it out from the head, that also keeps it from becoming too blunt around the fringe. And uh, just blending, it's more kind of like a longer in the center and then angling back up to um, the sides where we had cut previously. So if you notice, I'm always working. I've got a point of origin and a point that I'm headed towards in the haircut. I'm not guessing. I've got a plan from the get-go. Whenever I'm teaching, I always uh, make sure that, you know, I emphasize it's important to map out your haircut, um, work where you have a guide, um, be aware of the head shape. In this instance, I just pointed out the recession area. You want to be aware of that when you're working in the fringe area um, on any haircut. In this instance, this gal has a lot of density in the center of her forehead and not as much on the side. So I'm being aware, removing a little bit more weight. And I'm also, if you notice, I'm pulling the hair up and kind of angling it from longer at the, at the perimeter of the fringe and angling my hands, my fingers in, so it's a little bit shorter coming in towards the top of the head or the apex. And I've switched my shears. As you can see, these are eccentric shear. Um, I will have to take put a note in the comments below on which one this is. This is one of my favorites to remove bulk. Um, I'm testing here um, where the apex is because I know I need to remove more weight in that area so she can get height. Um, if you notice, I'm pulling it up, working on a pivoting guide um, and pulling it up and taking the shears and bending the hair, trying to find the first bend of the hair and cutting at that point. You never wanna, when removing weight or creating um, hairs within the hair, um, creating support within your haircut. You don't wanna cut below the first bend of the hair. So here you can see, I'm just kind of pulling it up, finding the bend, cutting, and then, and then softening at the ends. This is more of kind of like a notching shear. I like that because it kind of channel cuts. It just creates more um, airiness in the haircut and pieciness within it. I don't recommend using it on people that have extremely fine hair 
you definitely, or not as thick, you definitely are using these, this, um, this shear when you have somebody with really thick hair that you want to remove bulk, but you really want to add some pieciness and movement in the hair. Here again, moving to the back of the head shape, working on a pivot, a pivoting part. So I'm just always thinking about the round of the head. I like to blend with this type of a shear because it just, it blends the hair, you know, from one um, section to the next, but it doesn't, it, it keeps you from cutting, you know, uh, a blunt line in there just, um, that can be visual and not appealing in the final effect. Here I'm just kind of going back through and making sure that it's blended down to um, the nape area. I, can, I'm, I found that she still felt, felt extremely bulky here, so I felt like I needed to remove some weight, and I'm testing it. For when she decides to style her hair in the faux hawk style, uh, I want to make sure that she's going to get that pop that she wants. Yes, that is my sexy husband in the background doing the videoing of this. He never knew he was going to be a videographer when he met me, but now he's a champ. You can see the movement that's starting to take place here. And note that the hair, I, you know, I'm letting the hair dry a bit. I want to see how it wants to live as I'm, as I'm styling. This is where the creative portion comes in and your eye and your vision starts to take place. If the hair is too wet, you're not able to see how the hair wants to move. There, I was just pointing out in that little area that it was a little too bulky. So I'm going back in on this side and um, creating that movement that I want and, and taking out some of that bulkiness. Now I'm being aware not to open and close the shear too much. I don't want to remove the shape that I created. I want to create volume and lift within that shape. So... Um, I like to call this a shape within shape method because I'm creating support and shape within a haircut. So that when she puts her product in there and she blow dries, there's a shape within that haircut that's going to be lifting and supporting the outer layers of this haircut. You can just see how this haircut is coming to life. Now, because I was having um, a little bit of difficulty getting enough weight out, I'm going to go in. She needs a little bit more airiness to the haircut. I'm going to do some channel cutting. And the way you do that, I'm taking my razor. As you can see just the very tip of it. And I'm just, just channeling, just cutting little pieces out. But it's not every section. I'm just altering my section. So I'll take maybe about a half-inch section and cut those uh, pieces out and then take another section half inch and not cut and then bring the next section. This enables you not to cut too much. But this is only, I caution you, only to use if you've got extremely thick hair and you're really wanting that airiness and pieciness. And that is how you create a faux hawk. And here I'm just demonstrating how using a blow dryer and a vent brush, you can also style this into a more of a contemporary style. So it's very versatile. And this is where your disconnection comes in. You can see she can, for the day, she can wear it very um, contemporary. And then, you know, she's going out in the evening and wants to show her faux hawk. All she's got to do is put some product in there and pop it up. And she'll be able to have that fun faux hawk look that she wants. Hey, if you enjoyed this, let me know below. Be sure to subscribe for future um, lessons. Follow me on Instagram at onpointhairacademy.com or onpointhairacademy and TikTok.
And always remember your work is not about you. It's about how you make your clients feel. Bye.